if you've ever dressed up and LARPed in your house in subpar combat tops, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Guys, like and comment. The comment section is wild and free, and I will let it be wild and free. Get down there and find out why it is the most controversial and best part of my channel overall. If you guys are looking to support the channel, the best way to support the channel right now is Big Daddy Unlimited. Big Daddy Unlimited is like the Costco of the gun world. You get in there, you get sick deals on all types of firearm gear, firearms, and everything you can possibly imagine. People are saving a lot. First month is 99 cents after that increases. Link is right below. Get in there. If you're looking for ammunition, LAX ammunition, or gloves and sick bags for EDC and all that type of good stuff, we have Vertex. 25% off with Grand Thumb, 5% with you know the uh, LAX ammunition. Guys, girls, and of course, my not forgotten Cry AC combat sets. Welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about a little bit of a throwback. I want to go back to my roots a little bit, and we're going to be talking about combat shirts. Now, if you remember, I did a video of combat shirts uh, actually a pretty long time ago, and I was missing a lot. And myself, I didn't have as much time on certain types of combat uniforms or tops. So some things I lacked experience on. Well, 2019 brings us to a new time and I have a lot of experience on a lot of these units at this point. Um, at this point, I have uh, I think I've with the Cry alone, I've jumped like 40 times uh, high performance jumps with equipment with the Cry G3s. So a little bit more time living in them for weeks to months on end. Um, experience them in different environments, anything where from the Arctic all the way down to, you know, the tropics. So we're going to talk a little bit about my experiences, the experiences of others and how they um, have liked their different combat sets. And we're going to talk about maybe which ones work for you, which ones might not work for you. So without further ado, I'm going to simply hold them up and talk about them. I'll cut away to shots of me and a plate carrier actually modeling them because uh, they're meant to be worn with a plate carrier. Now, if you're not familiar with what a combat top is, Let's talk about the one that kind of started the movement. And you might be thinking the Cry ACs, but I would argue that the Cry G3s were probably uh, the better model of what has made the combat top what it is today. So these are the Cry G3s. So if you'll notice right here, what you essentially have is you have a nice moisture wicking material of some type with some type of ripstop type fabric on the sleeves. And the reason for that is that the sleeves are going to be brushing up against you know, brush and rocks and trees, and you want something that's not going to rip as easily. Compared to the body, the body needs to be able to wick moisture away because um, one, it's covered by body armor, and two, the areas that aren't are, are underneath your armpits, and those need to be able to shuttle away uh, that moisture to ensure that you can cool off. So the G3s are an excellent um, combat top. They're not you know, the best at everything and they're not the worst at everything. So most combat tops nowadays have several th things going for them. First off, every, pretty much every single combat top is no melt, no drip. That means from the heat of an IED blast or something along those lines, this thing is not going to melt your skin, which is a problem with a lot of old uniforms. You're not gonna have that so much with these newer ones. Now, there's always kind of a balance. You have on the one end, uh, comfortability and breathability. And on the other end, you have flame retardant ability. So usually you have, you know, combat toss going from one to the other, but in the case of the G3, it straddles the middle pretty well. Uh, these are very much so proven. They've been used worldwide um, by multiple people way longer than I have used them, but I will talk a little bit about my experience with them. So first off, the G3s are a little bit baggier of a fit um, compared to the G4s. So if that is an issue for you, it might be, you might wanna consider the G4s more, and I would generally consider the G4s a better combat top, but the G3s are still good, and they're actually a lot cheaper than the G4s right now, so that's a win. All right, the sleeves, we have a Velcro closure, so that way you can close it up. If we move up to the collar, the collar is nice and long. Um, I prefer a collar that has a little bit of length to it. That way, um, your sling isn't so much cutting directly into your neck, so you need to have a little bit there. These are quarter zip, that way you can zip it down enough to ensure that you evaporate sweat and that type of thing. The problem with the zipper is that when it's underneath your body armor, what happens is it tends, your body armor tends to push into it, the plate does, and that creates kind of a nice little mark over time that can become a sore and get infected. So you have to keep the zipped a little bit more up when you are wearing body armor. Now, this is a problem um, in certain situations when it's very hot. Um, there are other combat tops that are made that kind of mitigate that issue. 
um, but it is kind of an issue with most combat tops that you have. Now, if you run to the sleeve, you'll notice that the sleeve has these two strips of Velcro instead of that giant block that you saw with the Cry ACs. So if you're not familiar with the Cry ACs, they have just a giant block of Velcro right there um, to stick your IR patches and all that type of stuff. Cry moved to two, and the reason for that was it allowed it to more easily fold around your arm. It was the best kind of um, idea that they had at the time based on the materials that they had. Now, that's been solved in further uh, designs, but in any case, this works well. It folds around your sleeve, doesn't stick out too much. As well, we have a nice pocket, so the pocket can hold anything from... Um, many guys are holding sensitive items here, right in the rain notebooks. Tourniquets is a pretty common one, um, depending on your unit SOPs and TTPs and all that kind of stuff. Um, moving from there, we have a larger inner pocket, a smaller outer pocket, again, organized as needed. We also have a nice pen holder. A lot of people see pen holders or notebooks and they hear that stuff. And they say, what do I need that for? Well, yeah, combat isn't all pulling triggers. There's a lot of uh, stuff that needs to be uh, taken note of. Spoken like a true officer, right? So that is much needed. Now, on the opposite side, with the other sleeve, you do not have a pen holder, but you have the same pocket um, design. So these are the Cry G3s. They are fairly long at the bottom, and the reason for that is they're meant to be tucked into your pants. Um, despite that, I found that over time, the back especially tends to ride out when it comes to the Cry G3s. So those are the Cry G3s. Um, these are, of course, in multicam. So we're gonna talk about a couple variations right now of the Cry G3 uniform. The first variation that I'll bring up is the Arid. So the Arid is just a variation of Cry multicam. It is made for a desert slash more arid environment. As you can see here, compared to regular multicam, is of course more subdued, more brown, more kind of whites in color. It blends in much better. Now, multicam works in most environments very well. Arid is, of course, <laughs> for a different type of environment. Um, I love this. I have used this shirt very extensively, and I am very much so a fan of the multicam Arids. There is no difference between the G3s in multicam and the G3s in Arid. It's simply the type and color of the material used. All right, with that in mind, let's move on to our next one. The next one that we have is actually really interesting in my mind. So it is a Cry G3 cut. So we have the... Um, Velcro cut, just like we've seen before. However, what has changed is that these are typically called cry fires or dry fires, whatever you want to call them. But the company Dry Fire has provided the material and it was made by Cry Precision. So, Dry Fire right there. If you're not familiar with Dry Fire, Dry Fire is a manufacturer of um, excellent flame retardant materials. And they also made their own combat sets for a little while. In any case, these cries um, use the Dry Fire materials. So, the um, dry fire material used on the sleeves and on the body is extremely flame retardant. Now, here's a couple things about that. First off, it is more comfortable in my opinion. Um, they almost wear in like jeans where they become very soft and very smooth and they wash and they come out very nice over time. That being said, the problem with the um, flame retardant materials is that, is that they don't breathe as well as regular cry uniform. So because of that, you're going to have a little bit more heat retention. However, if for whatever reason you need a more flame retardant uniform, the dry fires are perhaps the best uniforms that you can get or among the best uniforms that you can get when it comes to those properties. There are a couple, couple that go even further into that kind of flame retardant property, but um, the dry fires are excellent. Now, these particular ones are in M81 or Woodland Camo. Those are fairly hard to source nowadays. There, are, there is another... Um, cry variant that is simply rip stop and an M81 is supposed to be made with the dry fire material. Again, those typically run a premium. They're used by certain units, um, not because it's specifically a choice, but rather to blend in with certain units that they're working with. So we have the Woodland Cries. All right, those in mind, let's go ahead and move on from the G3s. We're going to go over to the G4s. All right, right here we have the Cry G4s. The Cry G4s are, in my opinion, probably one of the best combat tops out there if you do not require your combat top to be um, you know, super flame retardant or, or anything like that. So the ripstop material that they use on the sleeves and a couple other things have been changed. So first off, due to advances in material design, they're able to have a material that is a little bit more stretchy. Because of that, they were able to engineer a closer cut. This means that you have less material hanging off your arms, which means that you have less um, chance of snagging shit and getting caught up. That's extremely um, helpful. A couple other things. So they've added some mesh vent 
on the underside of the armpits right there. It's not really a vent, it's just a different type of material that helps um, your armpits cool off. It really helps um, when you're in the field. The actual ripstop material has a little bit of give to it, and on top of that, I don't know what Voodoo Magic Cry Precision worked on their G4 ripstop materials, but it is among the softest ripstop material that I have ever felt. Wearing a G4 combat top is like wearing pajamas. And at first I didn't think that these could possibly stand up um, to the rigors of being in field, and yet they have. I've used this quite extensively. As you can see, this one is still marked up with UTM rounds. I clearly died right there. Um, but these are excellent. Now let's talk about a couple features when it comes to the G4s. You'll notice, compared to the G3s that the sleeve pocket design and a couple of things are changed. So first off, the cuff is very much so the same. We still have a nice little Velcro enclosure. You can still roll these up as needed or roll them in. That's pretty typical for most units. When you roll it out, you kind of get that white side to that camouflage. So typically a lot of guys end up rolling them in, me included. All right, moving to the sleeves right here. First thing that's changed is you notice that there is no longer an external pocket. The pocket is now internal. What that also means is we have one block of Velcro. The Velcro is a multi-cam material. Very cool, it's very soft, very flexible. It folds right around your arm and it's very comfortable to wear. So if you notice, this internal pocket has the same material as the sleeves right here, so it breathes still pretty easily. Um, again, tourniquets, whatever you want in there. Now, I put a couple right in the rain notebooks in here, and the problem, as you guys know, being in a really hot environment is how sweaty you get. So I found that having the paper side in against my arm tends to smear stuff. You know how the right in the rain, it's water resistant, but you get a bunch of water on it, and it gets a little bit weird. So what I tend to do with the right in the rain notebooks is I fold it uh, so that the you know green or whatever uh, plastic covers are on the inside, and I place that side against the inside of my arm with the paper facing out that way, or just close it that way you're not getting the moisture on that book if you're not lazy. And uh, that way you don't have any of that smearing that happens. I've seen that happen to a couple guys, so I just wanted to note it. Another thing that we have right here is we have a pen holder. The pen holder is recessed into the design. Um, it holds pens very well, which is very important. Again, much like the other one, we have a pocket. Same design over here, except on this one, we also have another pen holder on the other side. Very helpful for a variety of reasons. The pull tabs right here, as the zipper is right here on the side. Very easy to actuate, have a nice little string so you can hold on to them. I do wish there's an easier way to store these strings because they do have a tendency to get caught, but still an excellent design. Collar is about the same length as the G3 collar, which was an excellent design choice in my opinion. A couple of the things that they change is that the bottom of the uniform is very long and also slants down at the back. This is for when you're bending over and squatting down and all doing all that kind of stuff to make sure that the back doesn't pop out because that really sucks when that happens. So again, a really good design feature that they added on the Cry G4s. So these are the Cry G4s, different cuts, different materials, and probably among the best um, combat tops that you can get on the market right now, in my opinion. As we go further into the next couple combat tops that we're gonna be talking about, we tend to get further and further away from the Cry design. That being said, Cry Precision is kind of the originator uh, of the combat top. Now, there are many other companies that started things that were very similar, but they're generally considered to be kind of the father of the modern combat shirt. So with those things in mind, let's talk about a couple other ones. So right here, we have what looks to be a Cry combat top. However, this one is actually a reproduction. So a quick note on reproductions. There are many reproductions out there. You have both your Chinese airsoft copies, which I recommend staying away from if you're doing any type of serious work. And then we have higher quality copies. This is what I would consider to be a higher quality copy. It is almost a one-to-one -one perfect replica of a Cry G3, and it's made by Mr. Roman Kermaz. He runs a company, I'm gonna read it, that way I don't script the name or anything. It's Replica Linderhof Tactic. So. He makes some really excellent reproductions. Now the thing about his is that he will make them in literally any camo you can possibly imagine. Anything from Swedish camo to M90 to uh, Splinter Tarn, whatever forbidden camouflage you wanna throw on a cry uniform, he will literally do. So he does some very cool work. Now that being said, uh, the problems that he runs into with his are definitely in the pants. The pants, um, depending on the material, just don't work nearly as well as real cry as real cry pants. Now the combat shirts I have no problems with, but um, be advised I don't believe that his pants hold up nearly as well as actual cry precision um, 
manufactured pants. So those are replicas. So if you really need, you know, your combat set in a weird camo for whatever reason, he makes some good stuff. Uh, talk to him about materials. If you're actually using for professional use, I typically tell you to steer away and use something more traditional. In any case, let's move on. The next one that we're going to talk about is going to be the Patagonia. The Patagonia is very reminiscent of kind of a mix between a G3 and a G4. This was before the G4s were made. And there's actually a newer version of the Patagonia that no longer has this solid color. They actually have an entire multicam pattern combat shirt that breathes pretty well. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the Patagonia uh, combat tops. I know a lot of army guys are probably gonna gasp right now because I know you guys are issued these pretty extensively. But the reason that I do like to bring up the Patagonia combat tops is that Patagonia keeps trying to distance themselves from the fact that they make combat tops for hardened killers who slay people overseas. So I like to constantly bring that up and bring up Patagonia and the fact that they do that because it makes me very happy to think about them not being okay with that idea and taking government money to do it. So suck at Patagonia. You take the money, you take everything that goes along with that. In any case, Let's talk about the Patagonia top and maybe why I'm not such a huge fan of it. All right, to start off with, pretty standard Velcro cuff closure. They use the Multicam Velcro, very excellent choice. The fabric on it is very G3 reminiscent as far as its make and feel, so it feels good. They have external pockets with the nice Velcro that folds over. These pockets also have the ability to button down to become more secure. That is definitely a good thought in my opinion because you never know when Velcro is gonna come loose or anything like that. So the buttons are kind of an extra uh, precaution if you have some very sensitive items in there. Think, um, you know, sensitive items, we're not gonna get into that. But anyhow, um, there is no pen holder when it comes to the Patagonias. Not that big of a deal, but uh, it's something that I love to have on combat tops, but not a deal breaker at all. Um, they fit okay, they fit kind of weird on me. The thing I really don't like about the Patagonia combat tops is how short the collar is. So you can see it right here. It's a very short collar and because of that, I find that it tends to ride down and then my strap still gets on my neck. I still get debris kind of falling down into my neck and it's very annoying. Uh, so I'm not a huge fan of it for that reason. The zipper is still a quarter zip, it still works fine. No issues there when it comes to the Patagonia combat top. Um, it is a little bit longer than, than the uh, G3s, so I can definitely appreciate that. Not as quite as long as the G4s. Overall, a good combat top. I don't have the current generation Patagonia combat top, because again, I get these in blood deal trays with this type of uniform that I'm not issued. So I'm not familiar with how well those work, but I understand that the Army Cats who are issued those are very happy with them. Um, so let that be for what it is. Now, that being said, the Patagonia combat pants, I am not a fan of at all. We'll talk about that in a combat pant video sometime here in the future because I've got that rolling up as well. All right, now that we've talked about the Patagonia, let's move on. Next up, what we have is a very interesting combat top. Oftentimes, I found that companies kind of get um, a little bit stale as far as what they choose to do and what they choose to make. So First Spear has engineered a very interesting combat top. This is called the Asset. So the Asset is moving very heavily towards the flame retardant uh, side of things. Now that being said, they still breathe incredibly well. And in fact, maybe it's kind of hard to see, but this is actually a very thin material. It's like tissue paper with my finger. Anyhow, uh, because of that, it breathes very well. But this, these sleeves are actually made from a Kevlar type thread. The body of it is made from merino wool. Now there's a lot of great properties of merino wool that I love. And I love that um, First Spear just screws around with merino wool so much in so many other products because it is a highly underrated material to use in combat clothing. In any case, merino wool is antimicrobial, anti-stink. Um, if it gets wet, it still retains heat on you. Uh, and it dries very well. So I'm a huge fan of wool, especially for extended um, stays in the field. Wool just lasts very well as long as you take care of it. Now, with that in mind, wool, of course, doesn't breathe as well as some of the newer synthetic um, materials. So they have a mesh panel right under the armpit. Now, this is an actual mesh panel. It breathes extremely well. I've never found that I've gotten incredibly hot when I'm wearing the first spear shirt. Uh, so I think that's pretty amazing given the properties that it has. The sleeves with the Kevlar thread are extremely flame retardant. On top of that, they're extremely abrasion resistant. They just resist all that stuff. They don't get destroyed in the field. A very good material to use. Now up here on the top, we have, an, we have a patch for an IR tag or something along those lines. We have an external pocket 
So with a fairly large opening right there for tourniquets or notebooks or whatever you have, you might need. No pen holder, very sad. <laughs> Just it's not big of a, that big of a deal. And then we have a patch right here for like a flight patch or something like that with the um, classic first spear logo, or of course a, a flag or something like that. The collar is reasonably tall, about G3 length, so that works extremely well. Uh, allows it to keep those slings off your neck and keep debris from getting in quite as easily. These are also very tight. tight. They're uh, pretty form-fitting when you put them on. Uh, these are mediums. I think they're a little tight on me. I think I'd prefer a large, um, but that being said, they still work incredibly well. Uh, they're easy to roll up, and with this Kevlar thread, when you roll them up, you're not getting any weird kind of color flippage when you're flipping it out. These are all, all so solid colors. There's no um, camouflage versions of these. So if that's a huge deal to you, this probably isn't for you. These are also very long, incredibly long. Uh, it's a long boy. So because of that, it doesn't come out of your pants nearly as easily as like G3s or some of the other combat shirts out there. Um, I know I'm kind of like hitting on it pretty hard, but I'm a big fan of the first spear combat shirts. Now, I'm sure the next question is going to be, does it come in black? In fact, it does come in black. So here is the black version with the gray sleeves. Very smart looking. I know a lot of law enforcement agencies are currently using these. If you also look at the advertisements on Triarch, and they make some excellent pistols and rifles, they use first spear gear pretty heavily. Very well engineered. Can't say enough good things about first spear. Cannot recommend them enough to you guys. I'm a big fan of many of their products because I think that they're very forward thinking. So you have first spear. I'll get off their dick now. Let's move on to the next combat shirt. If you have in any way participated in hiking or the outdoors, you're gonna know the next brand. We have Arcteryx. So Arcteryx has broken into the military market with their LEAF program, which stands for Law Enforcement and Armed Forces. One of their forays was with this combat uniform. Now I've been issued many of the combat, um, you know, weather layers and rain layers and that type of thing from Arcteryx, but the combat shirts is something that I'm fairly new to when it comes to Arcteryx. So let's talk a little bit about these. These are definitely a departure from what is the norm when it comes to um, combat shirts. So first off, the, these combat shirts were designed prior to the inception of the G4. These are designed around the same time as the G3, maybe a little bit before it. So to start off with, they're almost, you know, recce type field shirt in, they're kind of like a, it's kind of like you mated a recce slash field shirt with a combat shirt. So I kind of like what they did. So first off, as opposed to a Velcro enclosure, they use a button enclosure. Um, there's a lot to be said about using uh, buttons versus Velcro. Uh, I do think it is a good choice. So we have a further button down here. They are easy to roll. These will also come with pads that can go inside the elbows right here. I typically take them out on my Arcteryx combat tops. If we move up the sleeves right here, we have a flat piece of Velcro um, for attaching flags and IR uh, tags and whatever you might need. To the side right here, we have an internal pocket pouch, uh, just like the G4s. Very well done. You also have small little loops for organization and that type of thing inside of here. Very fond of these. And what I really like about these compared to say the G4s is that with this little pull tab for the Velcro, with this little pull tab for the zipper, you actually have a nice little stay right here so you can thread it through one way and back through to ensure that it stays in one place. I think that's really nifty that they added that on this particular combat shirt. That way it stays out of the way and to secure it, um, it's just another way. Kind of like how the Patagonia has a button. This one has this nice little stay to ensure that if it gets snagged, it's not going to pull and undo your zipper to let all those sensitive items out of that particular pocket. Moving from there, the collar is G3 length, which is perfect. Again, what I really like. And what's very interesting is that instead of a quarter zip, they actually, on this one, have buttons. In fact, just one button up here at the top. And then, of course, we have the Fu Manchu collar that's Velcro. So what's cool about this is that if you need to button it or unbutton it, you don't have anything that's uncomfortable underneath your body armor pressing into you like a zipper where it's kind of cutting off circulation or creating a sore. So I thought that was really cool and forward thinking with what Arcteryx has done. Further, their material extends further down than most combat tops. So it goes down to almost about the nipple line and on the back it goes down to about the level of maybe about T5 or so. 
What's good about this is depending on the packs, packs can do a lot, have a lot of abrasion on those particular areas. So it definitely helps with abrasion to ensure that you're not wearing through the more kind of uh, weak part of the combat shirts. Now, the actual material right here from the body breathes very well. Um, it's well made. There are multiple versions of the combat shirt, anything from flame retardant um, to your typical like direct action type shirt. So this is this the normal one. This is not the flame retardant one. But in any case, I definitely like what Arcteryx has done with their combat shirt as well. The armpits have nice vents, very generous ventilation right here to ensure that you stay cool. Um, they've definitely done some very good things. I don't have nearly as much time on the Arcteryx combat tops as I do with uh, many of the others, but from what I've seen, they are definitely impressive. They're, um, the first time I ever saw them, they were issued to a pararescue unit up in Alaska, which is the first time I saw them, and uh, I thought it was very interesting back then. I think this was maybe mid-2016, maybe it was a little bit later, but um, since then I've obviously gotten some time on them, and I know many people who have been issued these are definitely happy with the Arcteryx combat tops. I know they're not as prolific as Cry and some of the others, but it's definitely an excellently made combat top. The next one that I'm going to talk about is going to, all these combat tops kind of look like normal, kind of either G2 or kind of G3-ish combat tops. But what separates them is some very interesting materials. So we have Beyond Clothing. Uh, Beyond Clothing is right here in Seattle. Uh, full disclosure, I am great friends with these guys. I love these guys and I love what they do and I have an affiliate marketing program with them and all that stuff. So. Obviously, I like what they do. I only affiliate myself with companies I like. But full disclosure there, uh, you know, guys like uh, Cry could give a, a shit less about me. So it's not like I'm, but I would advertise for them if I could. But Beyond makes some really cool stuff. So let's talk about it. First off, like many other combat tops, we have a standard Velcro type enclosure, pretty standard reinforced. The material on these is very G3-like. So these are, dem are um, internationally produced, this particular one. Beyond also makes domestic ones that are berry compliant, and those are their um, Axio system, I believe is how it's pronounced. These are the Cryos. So there's two different reasons that they do that. So first off, the Axios is for military and that type of stuff. You can buy them yourself. You know, there's no nothing there. They cost a little bit more because they're berry compliant. So the thing about it is that there are some foreign materials and foreign uh, fabrics and different things that are in many ways better than what can be used in berry compliant materials because they're just not made here in the US. And so what Beyond has done is, is that they are making combat sets and combat sets and different types of clothing overseas, um, very much so with those interesting materials. And they're also making their uh, berry compliant domestic type clothing. But again, this is the internationally produced cryos line. They only come in solid colors, they're not camouflage. But in any case, moving up to the pocket right here, you can see that this pocket is very G4-like, right? So it's just an internal pocket, which again, I've talked a lot about, I'm a big fan of. Um, big enough for anything that you need that we've talked about before. We have a solid piece of soft Velcro that folds around the arm, doesn't kind of push it out. Good forward-thinking design. Nice long collar to ensure that the slings aren't on your neck. Again, G3-like. Another thing that they have done is that they have extended, much like the Arcteryx, their more abrasion resistant material further down in the body to ensure that you have more of that um, abrasion resistance further down. So again, good on them there. Quarter zips, you still get those um, pressure points if that zipper is underneath the body armor, so don't do that. These are actually also fairly long, a little bit longer than G3, not as quite as long as a G4 length, but plenty long for what I have used them for, <laughs> and they work fairly well. So we talked a little bit about the cryos. Let's go into some of the other more interesting Beyond Clothing um, combat tops. So I don't have a current, um, currently you know produced combat top from them uh, in their most modern cut. This is one of the older ones that I was issued. It's very G2 like, but I just wanted to kind of post this out here just for notoriety's sake and say, hey, they've been making combat tops for a long time. They're um, what's interesting is that they're currently produce combat tops. Um, they make in Multicam and M81. It's one of the only companies that is consistently making M81 slash Woodland uh, combat sets, which I know a lot of you guys are kind of heavy and hot for to get your hands on. So let's go into one of the more interesting combat tops right up here. 
Being up in the Pacific Northwest, um, this is probably one of my favorite combat tops. They took a soft shell and a wooby and they married it together and they made this amazing abomination, which is the cold weather combat top. So the body of the material is a waffle top that extends all the way down through the sleeves. The material that's abrasion resistant is a soft shell. So you have that water resistance and that wind resistance along with the warmth and cuddliness that you get from a waffle top. If I could, I would probably marry this, waffle, this uh, combat top right here. I love this thing. It allows you to not have so many layers on when you're out in the field and that is just incredible. So again, this one has all the features that you sh saw on the um, internationally produced one. This is very compliant. So we have the Velcro cuff enclosure. We have the internal pocket right here with the nice pull tab for the zipper. We have the nice flexible Velcro. We have the nice tall collar for slings. Same pocket on the other side. We have this material that extends all the way down a little bit further as is kind of standard for Beyond Clothing combat gear. Um, this thing is just sick. I love this combat top so much. If you're in a cold environment, I don't think you can do much better than this particular one right here. Obviously it's not meant for warm weather, but God, that is a cool combat top. And one of the other ones that I don't have that is very interesting is their element um, combat top. So it is kind of a manatee gray color. They have the pants, but unfortunately I haven't gotten my hands on the top yet, but it essentially is a four-way stretch material that is water wind resistant that dries off very easily. A lot of my water boys out there using them, the Coast Guard uh, interdiction teams and some of the other cool water dudes out there because the uniforms dry so quickly and they work and camouflage well in those types of environments. Now, and so I don't do any of that, uh, you know, stuff. I leave that to the Coastie boys and the Navy and my Marine Corps guys out there, rah. So, but it is a very cool uniform and uh, we'll be talking, to, well, we'll do an entire video specific to that combat set. But guys, we have talked about all the combat clothing that I want to in this particular video. I'm thoroughly exhausted. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video. I know it's a lot of information and a lot of material. I appreciate you guys watching. All this stuff is really cool. The biggest thing is to get out there and train with it. So put it on, get out there and have fun. A lot of people are critical of each other. Oh, why are they wearing this? Why are they wearing that to the range? Who the, who the hell cares? Pay attention to yourself, worry about yourself, especially with stuff that doesn't affect you. Get out there and try this stuff on. Now I wanna be clear. Some people think that when the whole boogaloo or whatever goes down that uh, they're gonna be hopping around in full combat sets and you know, fire machine guns and stuff, probably not gonna be like that. You're probably gonna be surviving for your life and trying to find food and water as you starve to death and dehydrate to death. So how are your survival skills? But in any case, combat tops are cool. They work really well with body armor. Get them, check them out. Guys, thank you for watching. Appreciate you guys so much. And I've got nothing else for you. All right, last thing I have for you guys. I saw a really cool clip from Ellen DeGeneres. Now, a lot of people are gonna say, hey, Ellen DeGeneres, why are you talking about her? So first off, I don't agree with her on many things, but what I do agree with her on is what she said. She was recently photographed near um, George Bush. Maybe it's all publicity, but the point is I liked her message. Her message was, people were like, I thought you didn't agree with this guy. Why are you laughing and having, you know, joking with this guy and sitting next to him? She said, because I'm nice to everyone. Uh, regardless of what they believe. It's just part of being kind. And that's a message I've tried to preach for a long time. Be kind to everybody, regardless of what they believe. People who believe something different from you, guess what? It's their constitutional right. You have the right to free speech in America. So just because they believe something that you disagree with heavily, doesn't mean that you get to ostracize or be, ostracize or be mean to these people. You still have to be kind. We are missing so much kindness in the world right now, and we need a lot more of it. So make sure that you make the world a better place with kindness. Guys, I love you guys, and I'm so appreciative of all the support you guys have given me. If you've gotten all the way to the end and you want to support me even more, Patreon. Five bucks wins you a chance to possibly shoot with me. I pick out a winner every four months. You come out, you get to film with me, all that kind of stuff. Expenses paid for by me. Get in there also. That money directly supports this channel. Guys, thank you so much. Take care. Love you guys.